Imagine you have this LED and you want to run it with a battery. In this case, the polarity of the battery is so important. You have to connect the positive terminal to the anode and negative terminal to the cathode. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. In 1895, this guy invented something called bridge rectifier. It is a polarity corrector. After using this component, you can connect the battery in both direction. We use the bridge rectifier to convert AC voltage to DC voltage. You can find them in most appliances in your home. They came with different sizes, depends on the maximum current they can handle. The only problem with bridge rectifier is the voltage drop. Each diode drops the voltage by 0.5 or 0.7 volt. And since two diodes working together each time, so the voltage drop could be 1 or 1.4 volt, or even 2 volt at high current, according to this datasheet. So 1 or 2 volt is not too much, but when you multiply it by the current, that's a lot of power losses, which make the bridge rectifier so hot. This is why they came with a tiny hole so you can mount the heatsink and cool them down. To reduce the power losses, we can use MOSFET instead of diode, because MOSFET has zero voltage drop when you switch it on. So now I need a driver to drive the MOSFETs. I found this IC which is TEA2208. It is an active bridge rectifier and it can work with high voltage. I took the circuit from the datasheet. I just added some resistors between the gate and source of the MOSFETs. Then I designed the PCB and ordered it from PCBWay. So I'm going to compare between the ideal bridge rectifier and the regular one. By connecting the oscilloscope to this diode, we can see the voltage drop across it. This is the reverse bias, when the diode is switched off. And this is the forward bias, when the diode is switched on. I'm gonna zoom in to see the voltage drop across the diode. It is less than 1 volt, maybe 0.7 or 0.8. Now let's see the ideal one. I zoom in and as you can see there is no voltage drop. These are the waveforms before and after. Another test is connecting them to the same mains voltage with the same capacitor and the same load. The output voltage of the ideal bridge rectifier was 319 volts, but the regular bridge rectifier was 318 volts. I was planning to test it with different frequencies. I need at least 22 volts, but my function generator can generate only 20 volts. So I can't do the test, but according to Google, the maximum frequency is 1 kHz. I used this ideal bridge rectifier for my bench power supply, even though it's bigger than the old one, but I already have a lot of space in here. You can't find any ideal bridge rectifier online that can handle the mains voltage. This is why I made my own instead of buy it. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.